Good morning, everybody. I'm Brother Joe, and welcome to morning prayer. One moment here. Welcome to morning prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois, this Monday in Holy Week. Welcome to Google Meet. Uh, we just for now ask particip participants to mute their microphones. It's up to you whether or not you want to mute your um, video. It's our um, custom to light a candle to signify God's presence. You can do that at home. I'm going to do that now right here at home. Comments uh, can be made uh, to the uh, Google Meet uh, by clicking on the bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. That's important when we get to the community prayers section of morning prayer. If you don't have a prayer book at home, we follow the structure of prayer of the Brotherhood of St. Gregory Daily Office app in your um, smartphone or in your tablet or in your computer in the url line put dailyoffice.app and it will take you there um, there's a couple settings that you have to set if you're new to us um, in the upper right hand corner there's like three three small bars or three so small lines if you click or touch on there it'll take you to the um, settings portion of the daily office app two things you'll want to set is you want to set the psalm cycle to 30 to the 30 day psalm cycle and you'll want to set the lord's prayer to traditional language we'll begin morning prayer on page 80 of the prayer book um, followed by the vanity on page 82. the psalm today is going to be a portion of psalm 1 119 verses 33 through 72 starting on page 766 of the prayer book the canticles today are going to be canticles 9 and 19. Canticle 9 is on page 86 of the prayer book, and canticle 19 is on page 94. We'll take a moment here. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Meribah and on that day at Massa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Together, let us pray a portion of Psalm 119, starting on page 766 of the prayer book. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I'll seek shall keep it to the end give me understanding and i shall keep your law i shall keep it with all my heart make me go in the path of your commandments for that is my desire incline my heart to your decrees and not to unjust pain. 
Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taunt me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before the kings and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember your word to your servant because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble that your promise gave me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O oh Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O oh Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge for I have believed in your commandment. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
A reading from the Book of Lamentations. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and wandering all the precious, precious things that were hers in the days of old. When her people fell into the hands of the foe and there was no one to help her, the foe looked on mocking over her downfall. Jerusalem sinned grievously, so she has become a mockery. All who honored her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. She herself groans and turns her face away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She took no thought of her future. Her downward was a her downfall was appalling, with none to comfort her. O oh Lord, look at my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. Enemies have stretched out their hands over all her precious things. She has even seen the nations invade, invade her sanctuary, those whom you forbade to enter your congregation. All her people groan as they search for bread. They trade their treasure for food to revive their strength. Look, O Lord, and see how worthless I have become. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look and see. If there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which is brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah found on page 86 of the prayer book. <laughs> Excuse me, Canticle 9 on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, including all the saints throughout Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. Here ends the reading. 
Together, let us pray Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed, found on page 94 of the prayer book. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the angel ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together, let us pray the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 of the prayer book, followed by the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us pray Suffrages A, found on page 97 of the prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness, during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Next are the prayers for the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago and beyond for the week of March 24th. You can add your own intentions either silently or aloud at home, or you can add them to the comments feed of this Google Meet, and I will read them aloud. We pray for the sick, for those in any need or trouble, and for those who have asked for us for our prayers, especially Paul, Jacob, Jolene, Jeremiah, Katie, David, Beth, Susan, Sean, Kate H, Jonathan, Devin, Matthew, Ron B, Judy B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, former President Carter, King Charles, Princess Kate, Mary, Arun, 
all with COVID-19, Elizabeth, Jim, Charlie, Edward, Kelly, Ann R, Bill, Connie, Larry, Carmen, who had heart surgery yesterday, Eleanor Francis and Christian, they are religious, Ken, a deacon, Thomas, Tom and Greg, who are priests, Richard, a pastor, Michael and Rodney, who are bishops. For an end to war, remembering especially the people of Gaza, Israel, and the West Bank, Sudan, Ukraine, Russia, Mali, Iran, and Yemen, and for an end to violence and division in our neighborhood, city, and nation, and for those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. For members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott serving as security in Iraq. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. We pray for Eric and Rachel for they as they prepare for baptism. We give thanksgiving this week for the birthdays of Russell Rossi, Joey Rodil, Bo Armstrong, re religious, Michael Ungenloy, Harry Tingley, priest, Melba Rodriguez, Michael Fogarty, Diana Radson, Dave Bile, Dory Mayfield, Grace Stenberg, Deborah Malik, Tova Wickenfeld, Jim Sewell. And we pray for the over 100 killed in the terrorist attack in Moscow. And at the, the anniversaries of their deaths for George Elias, Walter McGillicuddy, Barbara Greeter, Clive Anthony Flowers, Jack Morrow, and Watson Stewart. And we have a prayer for peace. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kill in the hearts of all people the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who make decisions for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth be filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This concludes morning prayer. You can join us for morning prayer every morning here with the Episcopal Church of the Atonement at 8.30 a.m. Um, it's Holy Week. Oh, well, well, first of all, we have evening prayer on 5.30 on Tuesday. So tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. on Google Meet, there will be um, evening prayer. Um, Mass schedule this week is slightly different. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it is the same. So Monday, 7.30 a.m., Tuesday at noon, and Wednesday at 7 p.m. And starting on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, it, there will be, Monday, Thursday Mass will be, service will be at 7 p.m., Good Friday at 7 p.m. There's going to be a new Holy Saturday service in the morning at 11 a.m. The vigil will be on Saturday at 8 p.m. And then it's the regular mass schedule, um, the regular mass schedule um, at 8, 9, and 11 on Easter day. 
um, just a note also, there won't be a healing mass at 10 a.m. on Saturday. It's just the 11 a.m. liturgy that's for Holy Saturday. Thank you, everybody, um, for being here. Be kind, be safe, and have a good week.